Yes, good evening, everyone. The subject of the will is very, very complex. So this evening, I would like to begin by looking at, we could say, the difficulties engage in engaging the will, <coughs> and tomorrow look at some of the solutions uh, to, to try to separate the idea of will into the a context where we could understand what is actually the activity of technology. Technology is, we could say, magical will. It is a will that um, has deep roots in magical practice. And we've inherited certain aspects of it from the ancient world. And I would like to give you a picture of some of those ideas and then look at, look at how, what, do I, what do we mean by magic? The magic is any force that does something that you can't explain. So uh, how many of you know how the algorithm in your cell phone operates in contacting the cell tower? That's magic. So it means, I don't know what it does, but it's happening. And that, that, that's a door to the spiritual world. And the door to the spiritual world opens both ways. <coughs> so the issue of the will, especially in the context of technology, is what really is the nature of will. And Rudolf Steiner has at least seven different levels of will that he describes. We want, I don't want to just go through the litany of them. If you want to study that, look at the study of man. But there are implications of that, those levels of the will that are very much part of contemporary life, but they are, in a way, hidden. The nature of the will is to be hidden. It's a soul force that we use all the time but we're not aware of it, <clears throat> because when we use it, we are sleeping. So in will, there is a component of something that is very difficult to define, and that is known as intent. And the intent that is in the will has a great deal to do with the effect that the will has. It's just like money. Whatever you want to do with it, it does, depending <coughs> upon your intent. So money is will. We say good will. Money is good will and faith that when I give you this piece of paper, you're going to give me something that's equal. That's the basis of economy is trust and goodwill. But will is a very interesting realm. And hidden in will is this idea of intent. So I'd like to begin by <clears throat> just giving a picture from Rudolf Steiner's work of a little quote from the philosophy of freedom. Chapter 13, if you're into that kind of stuff. And this is about this is about this issue of intent. This is a quote: striving, or we could say desiring, in itself gives pleasure. Who does not know the enjoyment given by the hope of a remote but intensely desired goal? The joy, this joy, is companion of all labor that gives us its fruits only in the future. That includes your car. 
So this joy is the companion of all labor that gives us its fruits only in the future. The joy that you have on Saturday morning driving in the country is desire. It's connected to will. It is a pleasure that is quite independent of the attainment of the goal. For when the goal has been reached, the pleasure of fulfillment is added as something new to the pleasure of the striving. And this is, this has to do with intent. Why are you striving? Because we all know that the pleasure of the satisfaction of getting what you want soon goes away and is replaced by more intent to get something else. <laughs> so the striving is more interesting than the getting. And we could say that striving is the thing that is jeopardized when will is in technology. If we don't need to strive too much to push a button. And there's a, there's a difficulty in the will in that. It's called risk and reward. So, Rudolf Steiner in a little book called World of the Senses, World of the Spirit, gives a very beautiful picture of two different levels of will. What he calls personal will, which is what I want, what I desire, what, what, is, what is my intent, and what he calls ruling will. And ruling will is will that is found in nature. Nature has will. Just be out in a hurricane and you have a pretty good picture about intent. So nature has intent and it's sleeping, just like ours is, but it's very powerful intent. So he calls it the will in nature ruling ruling will, R-U-L-I-N-G. It rules the natural world. But in ruling will, there is not freedom, which is another kind of will. So in ruling will, there is what is known as the biological imperative biological imperative dictates the laws and the fundamental relationships in the natural order. In the esoteric language, that's called the elemental world. So the elemental world and the beings that live in the elemental world are a kind of will force in the ruling will that governs the laws and the forces of nature. The forces of nature, Rudolf Steiner calls elementals. The laws of nature, he calls elementary beings. They are a form of elemental being, and the higher laws are what he calls the spirits of the rotation of time. And those qualities of the natural world, space and time, and the natural order, they are a hierarchy of spiritual beings that are enchanted by humans in technological devices. They have a consciousness, but it's a sleeping consciousness because it does what someone who has free will wants it to do. If you want a good picture of this, read The Tempest by Shakespeare, and in there read Caliban's Lament Against Prospero the Magician. It's a beautiful picture of the problem of technology in today's world. He was a Rosicrucian, Shakespeare. Was, and that's what we'll do tomorrow, we'll look at the Rosicrucian issue the mission of Christian Rosenkreutz having to redeem technology. 
It's a very profound thing. Rudolf Steiner said the first incarnation of Christian Rosenkreuz is Cain, the first technologist. Mm -hmm. so it's a big schwung to get from Cain to your cell phone, but it's consistent. <laughs> <laughs> and there are ways to redeem it, and it needs to be redeemed. It's not evil in itself. It's only evil when we're unaware. And it's my understanding Rudolf Steiner came back to tell us to be aware. So this issue of personal will and ruling will is written in our own biology. So here we have personal and ruling will. And, it, and this name here, the striatum, is a part of your brain that is laid down in the first week or two of the forming of the embryo. It's a little thin strip, the striatum, it's called the corpus striatum. And the, it happens at a time <laughs> when the embryo is just a disc and a groove forms in the disc. It's called a primitive streak. And that groove is, um, if, you, if you go back into the ovary of the woman, the egg, at a certain, when it's time to mature, forms two polar bodies that split in the egg, and they make a groove in the egg between them. And that groove goes from the one side of the egg to the other side of the egg, and the side of the egg where it's touching the outside of the uterus is the spot where the, it's the sweet spot for the sperm. Because if the sperm hits that sweet spot, it'll go right into the egg through that groove and there'll be a total fertilization. Mm -hmm. That groove in the egg becomes your backbone. Right from the beginning, we are as Rudolf Steiner put it in the Calendar of the Soul, we are grooved into existence. We are engraved into existence. Now it's interesting that that word groove, the background of it, is spelled P-S-O-R-A-T. And if you're an anthroposophist and I take the P off there, I have a very interesting word, S-O-R-A-T, the name, the esoteric name of the demon of the sun. The esoteric name of the being whose job it is to bring um, what is known as the false sun. To bring the will, the combined will of Arman through technology and Lucifer through retrograde spirit activity. When the two of them come together, technology supports retrograde spiritual activity. I have a kind of false spiritual will that I can apply to changing the world. And Rolf Steiner gives a picture of the purpose of that. And today, that language, the purpose of that false spiritual will is globalization is the centralization of all human activity under one rubric. This is uh, Inter International Monetary Fund, uh, the World Bank, NAFTA, Google, <laughs> Yahoo, Facebook. Yeah, yeah. AT and T. United Airlines, no, we can just go on. Microsoft. Where everything will be, um, you'll have a, a self-replicating nano chip that will be put in your elbow. And when you want to contact somebody, you just go up and touch elbows, and it will go on a charge card somewhere in the cloud. That's a dream somewhere in somebody's drawing board. 
where everything gets centralized into one thing. The name for that is Sorat. It is grooved right from the very beginning. It's a great challenge of the will. It doesn't mean technology is bad, it just means we must become aware. Rudolf Steiner's famous quote is we have to rightfully defy our mind with Lucifer. We have to bring enthusiasm for the spirit in the face of uh, technological impacts. I just heard a quote the other day, I read it. Carl Jung said, uh, the quote was, the savage technocratic demands of the present time and that was said in 1952. The savage technocratic demands of our <coughs> present time. I thought, wow, we've come a long way, baby, <laughs> since 1952 with savage technocratic <coughs> demands. Yeah, to, to get in line, sign up. Here's your, here's your menu. We don't want that, you're out. Okay, that's, that's the savagery. So, so the surat being, we could say, well, that's just technology today. Well, I'll give you a little picture. It's actually in the Bible. If you read the story of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar um, destroyed the Israel's Israelite army and put them under subjugation in Babylon. Okay. And uh, he, their work of the Israelites was to make bricks. They had to make bricks to build all of the cities that was the, uh, Nebuchadnezzar was a remarkable organizer of technology of the day, building uh, cities out of bricks. However, they found molds for those bricks that Nebuchadnezzar had everybody make, that the Israelites make. Every brick they made had his name on it. That's will. And that's the kind of will that just is a replication, 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 replication. That's the kind of will that slips out of human ability to stay with it and just starts going off into some other realm. It's just the replication of things. Today we would call it machinery. Yeah. What we cloning is. Yeah, cl oh yeah. I mean, well, we have we haven't even seen the beginning of this replication. Imagery and all kinds of things. So it's the automatic replication that in the will where there is a kind of difficulty. And that, I mean, Nebuchadnezzar was a long time ago. And the crazy thing about his story was he became so great that he said, I am the greatest and you know, God's kind of in my pocket. God said, oh, I don't think so, so here, you are going to have the mind of an animal. That's what it says in the Bible. And you're going to lose your kingdom in a heartbeat, and there's going to be people coming over the hill, they're going to take everything away from you, we're going to put you out in a desert with the mind of an animal until you realize what the reality is of what this is that you're doing here with these people. What, what is the social will that you're bringing into the world by having all the bricks have your name on it? Every time they make a brick, they have to remember they're slaves. <coughs> That's the message. <coughs>